Hey guys, following the newest release of 2.0 for 7 Days to Die, I thought this would be an opportunity to show you how to set up your own gaming server. The benefits of this allows you and your friends to play online together, relieving pressure from the strain on your own computer so you can have as much fun as you like. We will then later on talk about how to set up custom worlds and in the next video and possibly talk about how to install mods. So let's dive right in. So first of all, you want to find a serving host. Now, the serving host that I use myself is Apex Hosting. Don't get thrown off by this Minecraft server hosting rubbish, though they're very good at hosting Minecraft servers. They have a brilliant support system. As you can see, they've got an active chat. I know most providers have this, However, these guys are just really good at getting back to you. So if you would like to have a look at Apex, a link in the description is available. So we'll have a little bit of a look at them first. We can see that they have got all these different options. So yeah, anyway, um, we can then select our seven days to die. I would say if it's just you and a couple of friends, you're absolutely fine with the three gigs. You would even be okay with two gigabits of RAM if there's about four of you that play. So we can go ahead and order that and get it set up. And I will join you at the panel. You would have got your server all set up. It is bare bones. What you need to do is make sure that you have got seven days to die set up. As you can see, they host everything here. But we're going to look for seven days to die. So just type that at the top. And then it's really simple guys we just want to create a new world and we shall restart the server now so in all intents and purposes we have now got a seven days to die server set up ready to rock and roll and we'll just wait for this little cock to say online while that's ticking over very important you go to your customization settings and then we can set all of our things that we want this will be your game difficulty. It's the same as in Steam when you're setting up a, a solo world. So we will go for Scavenger just to start with. You can change your server description. The server name. So this could be anything you want. And this will show up in the server panel. If you are thinking of setting up, obviously you can put your website URL here. What we have got here is we have got latest, which would be the 2.0. Then you've got your experimental. So latest is the latest at the moment, the 2.0. Um, if you wanted to run mods that's where you will be looking at which alpha the mod is compatible to server password should we set up a server password uh, and let's just check see if the spelling is correct yeah looks good that is all of the setup now what we want to think about is is really while you're getting into this you don't want randoms joining so friends only will link to friends on your steam account uh, you can have it as unlisted it won't show and then public means everyone will be able to see it but they would need the password if they wanted to join and if you don't want your server to update just tick that little box there that's really important when we're thinking about mods. Now this is all updated. Let's go back to our server. So as you can see, our server is now online and we're nearly ready to go. But one thing that we do need to do, and I'm only doing it because it's what my settings are, is we go into the config files. And this is more uh, applicable when we're talking about mods, but we go into the seven days to die main config what we do is we click into the text as you can see here um, don't worry it's not going to edit anything we just need to make sure we're in there 
and then we need to search EAC, which is the anti-cheat for seven days to die. Now, we want, it says uh, EAC enabled. What we want to do is put that to false. And then we save. And as you can see, it's now going to be asking us, do we want to restart? You do. Let's do that. And as that's loading, I will meet you on Steam. We'll have a little bit of a look at what we need to do there, and then we'll jump into the game. So as we're in Steam, you're going to want to get your administration privileges within game. So we're going to go into the properties and under select launch option, you are going to want to have hyphen console written in there. This is going to enable you to open up the console in your game. We're nearly there. So what we want to do is want to join a game and then this is where you can find any games so obviously these are all different servers that people have got around the world the shield means that there is anti-cheat enabled and then password ua server as you can see is basic pc there's yeah there's everything going on here we're going to connect though directly to our IP and as you can see there's our IP that I've already added in and then we're just going to connect. And it's as simple as that, guys. We are in. We have got a server running. Let me just double check. Yep. So F1 means that we can open up the console. We are in charge of this server and we can get started. So. If you want to know how to set up all your admin permissions and have some fun in the creative and developer mode and set up your own custom map, tune in for the next video. Drop us a little follow and you'll be notified when the next video comes available. Until next time guys, keep being awesome, I hope this was helpful and take it easy.